we're, we're really, really happy to have you join us today at, at Fashion Declares. Lovely. So if I could um, first uh, talk you through what we're going to be doing this evening, this brief hour. Um, firstly, we're going to be framing the issues, then we're going to be joined by Rosalind Redhead. We, we also um, have Belle Jacobs, who will be setting the scene uh, from, she was former fashion editor at uh, the Metro. Devora, brilliant photographer, who's also an activist and very active in the sustainable fashion space. Um, Alicia, who's a brilliant illustrator and graphic designer and communicator. Uh, and then we'll be breaking for a wider discussion. So that will um, take us up to 6.30 today. And the outcome that we're hoping is that we'll have a really interactive discussion. We'll be talking um, about some of the ideas and also framing uh, the topic in a way that, that we all understand, um, but also we'll be able to bring solutions and, uh, uh, and have uh, a, a further meeting in a couple of months time. If you could move to the next slide. So we, we all know that we're um, heading for um, a, a catastrophe that it, this, this slide shows over the last 200 years um, how hot our, our earth has become. And um, we, whilst we're talking about how we keep um, things within the 1.5 degrees uh, global warming over industrial, pre-industrialized levels, um, there is also uh, incredible doubt that um, that, that is in, in fact possible. If we move on to the next slide, so those, uh, the increase of already 1.1 degrees um, with 0.5 degrees trapped under the ice with ice melting at the speed that it is, um, with the evidence of more frequent and extreme weather patterns, um, not only um, in um, Europe and uh, Australia and, uh, and, and now seen very, very strongly in the global south. Um, if, if we look at the Human Niche Report, it says very, very clearly that as uh, land becomes uninhabitable due to, to drought, um, as, as biodiversity is, is lost, uh, we know that we've lost as much as 50% um, of species in the last um, 30, 40 years. Um, that food and water security um, will mean that as many as 3 billion people uh, will be on the move by 2050. So there's no question that we're facing a, a catastrophic event um, and that we need to do everything that we possibly can to avert um, the enormity of, of, of the collapse that we're facing. If we could move to the next slide. So uh, this shows you the uh, carbon footprint of um, by per capita. So Australians with 29 tonnes of carbon footprint, um, the UK about 13 tonnes per person. Um, I recently tried to um, look at how I could cut my um, carbon footprint and I think I've probably got to about five tonnes. That's being pretty much vegetarian, not having a car, um, and trying to, uh, you know, to 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 not fly, um, and having pensions and places that are green. But you know, there's lots of infrastructural change. But Rosalind will talk more about that soon as to what we need to do. Next slide, please. So. Um, this is a really brilliant quote from, from Bella Webb, who's also um, a supporter of Fashion Declares um, at Vogue Business. Um, so the charter um, for the industry is to align its communications effort to entice customers to lead lives that help limit global temperature increases to 1.5 degrees above pre-industrialized levels. And the guidance for the industry is to commit to accurate reporting and transparent communication efforts to avoid exaggeration or omission to appear more environmentally or socially um, socially um, friendly and focus on inclusive marketing and storytelling um, to, that encourages a more equitable industry. If we could move to the next slide. So the consultation, this is from the, the UN Environment Programme. Uh, the consultation noted that some of the current means of communicating will, will need to be eradicated to deliver on a climate agenda. This includes messages tied to overconsumption or shopping as a reward, um, breaking markdown cycles and commodifying issues like the climate crisis, 
participants recognized that changing the narrative would be a challenging task since fashion communications are often driven by a profit motive and it would require creativity and long-term thinking to decouple value from volume growth. Experts agree that the fashion sector has enormous potential to lay the foundation for a more sustainable and equitable future through its actions and its story storytelling. Doing so will take bold vision, uh, but could also set precedent for a wider climate movement, they said. So next slide, please. So the consultation found that aligning fashion industries to the Paris Agreement goals means promoting lifestyles and values that help limit global temperature rise. And the recommendations for communicators included committing to accurate reporting, transparency uh, and transparent communication efforts, avoiding exaggeration or omission to appear more environmentally friendly or, soci or, or socially friendly, championing changes and demonstrating solutions to help individuals live more sustainable lifestyles, spotlighting new roles, uh, new role models and notions of aspiration or success, celebrating ecological, cultural and social values of the industry, focusing on inclusive marketing storytelling uh, that uh, encourages a more equitable um, industry and motivating and mobilizing the public to advocate for broader change. So next slide. So a couple of books, um, Rosalind was amazing. She suggested, um, living the, the 1.5 degree lifestyle, which um, really found fascinating and really, really absorbing reading. Um, um, I, I've, I've, uh, I've committed to buy um, 10 copies so that I can give them to friends um, and, and also swears by how bad are bananas, um, which having supported fair trade bananas rather worries me, but, but there we go, um, Mike um, Berners-Lee book. So if we could please now um, ask Rosalind to quickly join us and um, race through her presentation. Um, Rosalind, over to you. Hi, lovely, lovely to be here. <laughs> um, yes, um, in 2019, in, in February 2019, um, I saw this report. Um, it come, come out um, a few months after the 2018 report. Um, saying that we needed to keep uh, below 1.5 degrees. But this was very much aimed at systems, really. Um, and this is quite, quite new. And it was very direct. It says changes in lifestyles are not only ine inevitable, but we need to be radical and start immediately. And it really um, set out what the Paris Agreement has told us to do as individuals, as as and as households, which is that we need to get to um, 2.5 per person um, lifestyle emissions by 2030, 1.4 by 2040, and then 0.7 by 2050. Now, 0.7 is a really interesting number because this is actually not a, a socially constructed carbon budget. This is a scientific calculation of what our natural ecosystems or you know agriculture that is alive you know that, that has a live soil this is what per person um, those natural ecosystems can absorb so it's not a social construct it's not a socio-economic decision this is actually what a scientific calculation of what can if we emit carbon per person what can be absorbed and what it essentially means is if you're living on 0.7 tons per, per year, you are not adding to the problem. Anything over that, you are continuing to add to the problem. So, so it's, anyway, I decided to live on one ton um, per year. And I did that for a year, going through all the seasons. Now, this does say it's my average day, but actually this is a summer day. So there's no heating issues. And I will come to that because heating issues were a serious, a serious problem. Um, so this gives you an idea of um, you know, what, what I was consuming. I mean, so, so there is, you know, there's, um, there's food, there's a kind of breakfast, there's coffee, there's even two glasses of red wine, I'm cycling, um, there's a sort of snacky lunch and um, you know, various drinks and stuff like that. 
uh, local seasonal strawberries, which are you know much lower carbon. And I'm, I'm including a very small amount of parmesan, um, which is one of the most high carbon um, um, cheeses, but absolutely delicious, and I couldn't do without it. So I, I only used about 25 grams of it, which is fine. Um, yeah, so these are some of the sort of more high carbon um, lifestyle choices, which, which were a bit of a shock. At the moment, public transport is 80 grams a mile, which is still pretty high. The first hour of gas heating used up my entire, entire daily carbon budget. And then, you know, streaming video, fine, unless you, you know, you binge on it. Um, you know, anyway, I can't go through all of this, but, um, you know, a few things to point out that vegan um, isn't necessarily always low carbon. Rice is quite a high carbon choice. Anything air freighted is off the scale, bad. <laughs> um, so um, I'll, I'll continue on now. Um, but, you know, there were, I mean, when I first started, just before I started the project and during the project, I, mean, I was really just like, well, you know, what can I do that's completely not going to add to my budget at all? And, you know, it was surprisingly a lot of stuff. And this is really, you know, just me, what I like. But, you know, there's nothing about sport. There's nothing about all sorts of creative things that people do. Um, and, you know, this is really just quite a basic list. So I guess, Rosalind, um, for the audience, I mean, those are the kinds of things that we could start portraying because those are carbon free or, or incredibly low carbon activities. Um, yeah, if, if, if you wouldn't mind um, explaining your last slide. Yeah, um, this is also very important. So I think this is a bit of a shock, a shock for me, but I, it may be a shock for other people. The IPCC report has never put in um, any, any information on demand side mitigation, which basically means, you know, that if you're looking at supply and demand, you know, what people are actually demanding and consuming. Now, that is pretty shocking that this is the first time in, in the whole of the IPCC's, IPPC's existence that actually put this in. So this came in just um, a month ago. Um, and it says choosing low carbon options such as carb free living, plant based diets with a, without or with little animal products, low carbon sources of electricity and heating at home, as well as local holiday plans, can reduce an individual's carbon footprint by up to nine tons of carbon. Um, it does also mention that sometimes infrastructure needs to change and policy, but there are a lot that you can do with just personal choices, and I guess I'm a proof of that, because, um, you know, not all the infrastructure existed, but, you know, I've managed to have a good life. <laughs> so well, thank, yeah. thank you so much for sharing that, and, and in the recording, you'll be able to see Rosalind's slides and study more closely what, what the higher and lower, and those two books are fantastic too, and um, Rosalind's um, uh, web, um, uh, website will, will also be popped into the chat. Um, so, so please do um, connect and any questions you've got, please ask later. Can I, can I ask now, Belle, if you could talk to the audience about um, how we start. You, you were fashion editor there at Metro. Um, I know that you've been passionate about sustainable fashion and sustainable living, um, whatever, since I've, I began to know you. Um, but how, how drastically do we need to change things and um, how might that change come about? How, how drastically do we need to change things within within the industry? Well, I mean, I mean, Saf and, and Rosalind have have put the case on how close we are to uh, uh, disruption on a scale that really I don't think any of us truly comprehend at the moment. And, and fashion's role in that is is huge. Uh, those of you who don't know me know that. Uh, may not know that I used to be a fashion editor, very, very keen, sort of promoting the consumption of fashion. Basically, uh, the way I see it now is most fashion communications, most fashion media is about promoting that consumption. Um, I had a huge reversal when Rana Plaza, the garment factory, fell. And, and when um, not just me, but everyone in the industry started to ask some very, very serious questions about um, fashion, which has been considered innocent, frivolous, happy, creative. Um, we're discovering that it's anything but and that it is producing currently um, between 100 and 120 billion items of clothing a year. 
Um, even if you replaced all of the bad materials in that uh, number um, with good materials, you are still living beyond the planetary boundaries that, that we can give to an industry that is essentially creating luxuries. Not very many of us on this call today, and certainly within Global North Nations, needs more clothing. Um, every uh, new piece of clothing that we, is, is produced today is essentially a luxury. Um, and, and what we now need to address, and, and something I've been very, I'm sorry I'm talking so quickly, but there's a lot to cover. Um, I have now become a huge advocate of, of the idea of degrowth, that we simply need to reduce the number of clothes that we buy every year, the number of clothes that we produce every year. And different figures have come up for this. Um, Kate Fletcher, from who wrote The Amazing Earth Logic, puts the percentage of clothing that we need to reduce uh, by, by 75 to 95%. For each of that, that is a dramatic concrete, for, for each of us, that is dramatic concrete change in our lifestyles. And if you're one of those millennials who just wants to shop, and shopping is a social and a community and a relaxing thing to do, it's a pleasure, it's a joy, it's a very, very big thing to encompass. So, so we're looking at a dramatic cultural shift. Uh, the UN says uh, that fashion has the potential to rewrite the landscape. I would argue that not in its current format because fashion essentially drives its consumption through a very, very well-funded, intricate um, structure of advertising, of marketing. There are billions and billions of dollars being thrust into trying to persuade us as ordinary consumers, I use that word with reluctance, to purchase more than we essentially need. And of course, the young are the most impressionable. They want to fit into their tribes. So the revaluing that we need to see, the restructuring that we need to see that needs to come from a, a very, very um, deep reassessment of what is important to us. And I think facing the emergency, very few of us would say it's another pair of jeans or another t-shirt or another anything. We do not need any more clothing. Um, if we reduced, I mean, go wild on secondhand and vintage, but we just do not need to produce any more clothing. We need to revalue and we need to put nature at the center of all of our activities going forward. I've got one more minute. So I actually want to say, I know that this sounds difficult. I know that it sounds hard. And what I seem to spend a lot of time talking about now is the joy inherent in breaking the bonds of the system in which we find ourselves, which is essentially racist and speciesist and, 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 and creates deep global inequity. The joys of breaking those bonds and finding new expressive ways to, to, to talk about what we want to see in the world going forward. We are in an emergency world on the brink of losing everything we know. Now let's use the resources that have been put into fashion marketing to envisage a new world. And I'll stop there. Is that okay, sir? Thank you. That's that's brilliant, Bell. Um, so so really setting up the topic for us. Um, you know, we are we're, we're going to move into what we can practically do, but it's it, it's important that we understand that we are at this point having to to redesign the fashion industry to sit within planetary boundaries, and we know that it does not. It's responsible for between four and ten percent of greenhouse gas emissions and. Uh, and, and huge loss of, of uh, biodiversity and, and land that needs to be used for uh, to, to, to feed us. Um, so over to, to Devorah now, if, if you wouldn't mind, Devorah, as a photographer, you've also been looking at, you know, how do we try to begin to do uh, communications differently? Over to you, Devorah. Hi, everyone. So, um... I feel that we have a, a unique opportunity opportunity here to drive, uh, be a driving force uh, as far as the fashion sector's climate response is. Um, in COP26, um, uh, what was new to the fashion charter was um, uh, the role of communications in uh, a more sustainable industry. Now, if fashion doesn't move, we will lose Gen Z and everyone else in between from Billie Eilish to Jane Fonda. Uh, fashion is gambling away its long-term credibility for the sake of avoiding short-term issues. Um, 
and there will be a tipping point uh, like there was with uh, smoking where, where people will stop buying fashion because they will feel that the effects that, uh, of the climate crisis um, and they will realize that fashion is, you know, majorly contributing to that. I know that we all know that in this space, but not everybody amazingly still uh, doesn't know this. Um, so uh, we, we, we spoke earlier about addressing the consumption and, and it is central to, re to reducing uh, the climate impact. And we must align all, get all the stakeholders holders in alignment. Um, in the fashion sector to move towards the 1.5 uh, pathway. And there is a growing demand from investors and consumer uh, demand is, is leading this. So um, brands, you know, they hide behind the fact that, oh, look, here's a, a cool new fiber, but it's more important for us all to show the less sexy work that needs to be done, like working with suppliers um, uh, to improve things. Um, we, we, we must dedicate communications to making um, sustainable uh, lifestyles desirable. Uh, this, uh, this, I feel, is very important. And it's a tough sell because there are high um, levels of uh, fatalism. There's a growing gap in optimism. And the, the, there is a thought that we are too late. However, if we look at the words of David Attenborough, um, he says that we must create a sustainable revolution born out of optimism uh, to create an equal world. Um, our mo motivation must be hope. For young consumers, um, uh, fashion must be affordable to all. Um, you know, as Belle was saying, we shouldn't be buying uh, new fashion at all. So if we were buying secondhand. Um, and the emphasis must be on the emotional value, uh, value and the durability of clothing. Um, I, I have read that um, it said the communication experts uh, trained in sustainability are like gold dust right now. So that gives uh, everybody in this space a, a huge opportunity to uh, be part of driving things forward. Um, brands want to drive sales but, uh, uh, and visibility, but there needs to be less focus on newness and more on solutions and maintaining consumer uh, relationships. Um, now, fashion has the ability to foster innovation, empower communities, communicate new ideas, showcase identities and cultures, but fashion must be reinvented and utilised to galvanise creatives to present pioneering climate solutions. The fashion industry has the potential to bring sustainability to life through communication in ways that have not been considered yet. Um, this is where we come in. Uh, how do we do this visually? What, what does it look like? Um, how do we visually make sustainable lifestyles de de desirable um, and really we need to brainstorm this to see to see what um what we can come up with um so um i i i follow the, this chap um, um francesco colucci he is um the uh he dresses the windows um at trade and really for me this is fantastic i mean he he shows you uh, how creative you can be with what we already have. I mean, if I was going to a, a red carpet event, I would love him to, to dress me because look what he can do. I mean, his windows look couture uh, and that is why they're so successful. So if you are wanting to dress like this, you can dress like this, you know, with things that already exist. There is There should be no stopping you from doing that. If we can have the next slide, please, Millie. So I love transformation uh, and how do we transform the every, every day? So what would your sustainable fashion lifestyle look like? I mean, it's a bit of an oxymoron. Um, as some say, there's not much, uh, you know, there's no such thing as sustainable fashion. Um, and I think this should be our guide. So let's start from here. So I, I, fashion declares, I'm guessing most of us have an interest in fashion, even if it's one of hate. Um, when I search for images using a sustainable lifestyle, um, I can see that the storytelling is really weak and visually. Um, of course, our first thought is of, 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 the, of our earth and of the soil, what we stand on there, foundation of everything, but we must be brave and bold in our thinking to create more visual impact. And next slide, please, Millie. Um, no more heroes anymore. I mean, the work that we do and the imagery that we 
produce must promote equal equality between all peoples. At the same time, encouraging brands to do the same, starting with the people in their supply chain and to set sand based targets to reduce em emissions. Imagery can really help that narrative. Traditionally, the person center stage is the hero. If there's more than one person in an image, it's not always, it, it's, it can be difficult not to have a hero that, that your eye will draw, be drawn to. So how do we address that too? Um, Melly, next slide, please. Of course, we can always show people singly. Um, we have to, we have to sell, sell a new dream, uh, creating imagery and storytelling that is aspirational, that brings everyone along on this journey. So change can happen faster. It's why we look at fashion pages in the first place, they transport you. Um, so what does that look like for you and for us? That is the question. Thank you so much, Aurora. That was really, really helpful, really powerful. So Lucia will be um, presenting from here, um, amazing illustrator and graphic designer. Um, we, we will, of course, be sharing this recording later on. So if, you, if you'd like to um, enjoy the slides and some of the amazing presentation materials, um, that will be in the YouTube video when we put it up next week. Over to you, Alicia. Thank you. Hello, everyone. And um, I wanted to like talk about a little bit about like the process of a creative person. I'm a creative leader at the body shop. And if you go to the next slide, please, I would like to talk about like my process and my way because haven't been easy. And I, I've been reading your comments. I know that there's some student here, some people that they are creative and it's not an easy way. Like I grew up in the Canary Island. I don't know if you know that uh, island. So I'm from La Palma, a really nature place. I studied design because I thought that was a really way to connect nature with the human beings. And I started to st uh, study a PhD. I also saw that someone else in the chat is also starting a um, sustainable fashion uh, PhD. Uh, and I moved to London where I work with uh, Safia in People Tree, it's a fashion brand like uh, I love it there. But at some point, uh, as a designer, as a creative, I have to move on because uh, people treat, I didn't have the opportunity at that time and that moment to, to grow in the direction I wanted to grow. So I, I moved to another fashion brand and um, I started to work in fast fashion and I forgot my values. I forgot my background. I forgot like everything I was fighting all my life for. And I think that's something I, I don't know if some people have the same situation, but this is uh, something I fight every day. I live in London in a big city. I have to pay so many things I, and I want to be like doing many changes, but sometimes I cannot do that. So my question for me is how can I change things? So I got really frustrated as a creative and I felt I lost my values. So I changed from fashion to beauty. Uh, I think I ran away because I couldn't find a solution as uh, Bell was mentioning, it's like, it's really hard. It's really hard to, to change things. And as a creative, I, I'm not ownable of the chain. Like I'm not ownable of the marketing or the resource. So I got really frustrated. So at the moment I work in the body shop where I create like campaigns as plastic for chain or moving into like vegan uh, 2023. But again, it's many things to do. So next slide, please. And so what I'm doing since uh, I realized I lost my values, I start to work in the, collage illustration, I do everything digital. And what I'm doing with my collage is just to, to treat some themes like activists, like you can see here a few examples of what I've done for Fashion Declare, is treat some themes in a nicer way. Like in social media, in digital channels, we are so used to get information everywhere, all the time. Like we don't know how to filter that information. We don't know how to get the people to change the way that they, they live. As Bella also was mentioning, it's like the, the young people, it's like moving too fast. They want to have everything at the same time. So I was like, how can I impact this? How can I make a change? How can I make it visually? Uh, if I do it the same way that we have done it until now, it, people are not gonna stop. So that's why I did this kind of beautiful collage talking about like things that matter because look like people don't stop for anything. So I gonna say, okay, I wanna make it be like beautiful. Maybe the people stop and then think about what they are seeing. So you can see my collage in my page, Alicia Reguera, or the Tropical Collage. And as you can see, I work for charities. I, I talk about many things like fashion, like um, gas on emission and all of this. So yeah, feel free to, to, to go and check. And next slide, please. As a digital designer, as a creative, working in big corporation, I'm really worried about the future. I'm really scared about the future. And I'm sure you have heard about the metaverse, the digital art, NFT, and fashion is one of the biggest 
platform that they are like conquering this area, like cryptocurrency and all of this, and this is not sustainable. I don't know how we are gonna do in the future. I'm, I'm really, really worried. I, as I put here, I'm terrified of the future. I believe we can change it. We need a like corporation to be open, transparent and share information with the customer because I don't think this, the society is aware of this. Like uh, in, at the beginning, I, I was like, okay, if I do everything digital, I will save many, like many things in my process. I was super wrong. So I, I would like you to think about like where we're going uh, as a fashion industry, as a, any industry with all this uh, digital and um, experience. So please, uh, yeah, if you want to add something about this, uh, I would love to, to chat more about the future. But yeah, I think if we work together, with, like the companies have more transparency, we, we can change that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alessia. It's, it's important that we really broaden it out because you're absolutely right. So, you know, we, we know, you know, if we put it into a commercial term, we, we can say that, you know, if, if we do communications um, well um, and we do them honestly and openly and we show that we care, um, you know, that will win brand loyalty as a, we are first movers. Um, it, it, it will engage people who are increasingly feeling um, anxious and wanting to see change. Um, it's also really part of, of what's being called for now in, in, in both the circular economy, um, also in terms of rental repair and resale. And we know that legislation is coming, so we, we need to be on the front foot. Um, and it's also morally doing the right thing. Um, next slide, please. So switching to buying um, two or three garments a year instead of 25 garments a year, which is apparently the average in the UK, is, is what we need to be thinking of doing. Um, and I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, so some of the brands that are involved with Fashion Declares at ACS, which has been um, looking at how to set up brands, um, resale platforms, also rent and repair platforms. Um, so just another brilliant, brilliant example, Nudie Jeans with, with repair. Um, next slide, please. Um, other brands that have been promoting um, uh, rental and recycle and repair online as well, um, who are involved with, with Fashion Declares. Um, again, trying to reduce uh, the extraction of, of natural resources and really prolong um, the life of fashion. Um, Apple came under uh, a lot of protest recently for having built, um, in, I think it was in Portugal, having um, uh, built obsolescence into their phones. And so increasingly, one would expect that, um, that fashion products too um, will, will have to start me meeting um, standards so that, that uh, fashion isn't, isn't falling apart and that it, it will be something that lasts us um, for many, many years as opposed to being worn just five or seven times if, if that and then thrown away. Next slide, please. So um, as working at People Tree, um, when we, we only worked with, with natural fibers, um, organic cotton, and we put craft really central to everything we did. Um, you can see at the bottom right hand corner kind of showing the weavers and the makers of the fabric um, alongside the models. But, you know, having said this, this is also um, difficult. You know, we, we need to be ensuring that uh, rurally based um, uh, communities that are economically um, deprived also have an access to um, the market and can earn fair wages um, and can produce by hand. So what I'd like to do here is to invite you um, to brainstorm, to put into the chat um, some of the words that you would um, expect would come up in the current uh, marketing brief. And so, um, and then we'll, we'll go on to talk about what those new terms could possibly be. Um, so for example, I think we could probably take this down now, Millie. So in terms of the old, um, the old terms, and maybe if, if we could pop them into the chat box. Um, so um, some, I mean, we, I mean, we had a bit of a brainstorm um, together um, earlier on. We were really looking at, you know, how, you know, the, the, um, the brief around fashion is about it being 
aspirational, but what is that aspiration? And some, some key words that kind of came up were um, success, thank you, highly sexualized, um, status. Um, but if you'd like to type into the chat box some of the other um, terms that, um, that you often see and associate when with, with the kind of brief or all the kinds of advertisement or communications that you see um, in the fashion industry. So in, insufficient, yeah, that frustrated, fear of missing out, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, quick. Yeah, if you consume this, it will make you happy. It will fill fill a gap. Um, great. Never satisfied. Status, part, maybe also part of a tribe. Anything else? What other things spring to mind in terms of, of the current uh, fashion marketing that you see around you as an exclusivity? Oh, maybe that's similar to, to the FOMO idea. Let's, um, let's then move to some of the new um, phrases and terms that we could associate, we could be associating uh, with new forms of, of fashion marketing or um, what, what will become, if you like, um, the, the sustainable um, communications messages behind. And if we think back to some of the brilliant um, discussions and lifestyle um, uh, suggestions that Rosalind had experienced and put to practice. Um, so that, that would be based more on um, what, would, what would that look like? So yes, kind of longevity, um, maybe more a, um, a kind of a sufficiency as opposed to um, just the more and more. Well-being. Yep. Um, alive, uplifting, authentic, perhaps open. Yeah. And maybe, uh, I guess, if, if there's no gap to fit, it's more about that connection, isn't it, with, with, with others, with your place, in yourself, a kind of a well-being, interdependence. Yeah, lovely. So um, joy, equality, diversity, purpose. Also the, the recognition that, um, that we all have something unique to bring. You know, it's not one mold, um, but the celebration. I love that belief in yourself, a focus on life rather than stuff, self-confidence, regenerative, Regeneration, great. Okay, um, I'm going to ask Belle if she if she might like to share her thinking. Um, you know, having been a, a journalist, um, how do you think fashion journalism, you know, the written word, um, can can help um, to start moving uh, the debate and you know some of those solutions forward so that we we know what we should be doing. So, um, yeah, it's really interesting because when I was at Metro, obviously, I was writing essentially what I regard as puff pieces. And I've said this to you, uh, Saf, and, and, and to, to you, Devorah, you know, it's, it's most fashion editorial feels to me like a form of advertising, uh, even when it's not clearly shown, labeled as, as, as paid for. My, my approach these days are very different. I never, never write about trends um, of styles. I do sort of write about cultural movements, so where people's belief systems are starting to uh, um, engage with. Uh, in most of my writing, uh, there are fashion journalists out there that I respect deeply, but they tend not to be ones who write about the clothing. They write about the systems of clothing, the systems of production, the, the human rights issues, the, the processes. Um, I think when the UN was talking about transparent communication, it was you know being clear about what a brand was doing behind the scenes. 
when I write, and I had this chat actually before I came on here with a, uh, a creative from XR who is one of the key people responsible for the visuals. And we were talking about uh, hope and fear and, and the roles that they have to pay, play in moving us forward. Uh, to have one without the other, it's, it's not really going to work, I think. If you frighten people to the point where they no longer feel that there is any hope or that they cannot act, it, you've kind of lost your way. We, we can't, you know, every um, 0 0.01 degree that we manage to claw back uh, results in saving thousands of lives. So everything that we can save matters. Um, but if you then just give them hope, you uh, risk the problem of painting an overly rosy picture and, and people start to go, well, it's OK, because other people have got it covered. So I think going forward into the into the fashion communication future, and I, I still don't believe that we really should be writing about completely new clothing or pro promoting new clothing. Going forward, for all of us, it has to be a combination of those two, not only in the way we communicate as communicators, but also in our own lives, you know, to know that there is an emergency, a lived reality for the global south, um, and for, if you want to be very practical about it, for centers of fashion production, these are, these are places under threat. Um, it, you know, it, you and I and all of us here exist between worlds, don't we, really, between the reality of the world that's coming up and the, nor the normality, per perceived normality of the world that is still continuing outside our windows. But things are changing. And I, I think the way to impel action is this combination, a very delicate balance, a very intuitive balance of hope and fear. And when I say hope, it's all the beautiful things that we could make of our response to this new world and the way we grieve and celebrate what is being lost. Sorry to be so heavy, but I do really think in these terms quite a lot. Thanks, Safo. Thank you. Um, sorry, Sas, I'd like to ask you a very interesting comment about um, how at Farfetch you're helping customers to understand the, um, the footprint of the, the products that they buy. Perhaps you could explain a little bit more about what you're doing at Farfetch. I can. Yeah, I'm just sat in my living room, not at my desk right now. Um, yeah, it's nice to see everyone. And thank you for those um, presentations. That's been really interesting to listen to. And you know what, like, I, I agree so wholeheartedly with everything that's been said. I think perhaps it's slightly different when you work at a brand. And I don't know if there's anyone else who works at a brand here, but I've always had the approach that like sometimes you've got to be in it to change it. And that, yeah, you work in like this terrible capitalist, horrible place but if you don't do it then the brands will never change so um although it's obviously so important to have activist groups like fashion declares banging the drum you also have to have the people inside who are trying to make the change so i guess that's what i meant by that comment just around i feel like huge things have changed in fashion since i've um been working in it and following it um but yeah the, the consumer piece is huge and you know we're, we're by nowhere near uh, I mean, we're not even that great. Like we're not really perfect. There's a huge amount of work that still needs to be done. But um, I think that's the key here. People just don't realize. Like I chat to my friends down the pub or, with, uh, or you know, whatever. And they, they don't understand that supply chains exist and that the clothes that you wear have had 50 people's hands on them making them. Like this education piece for the, for the wider population is just missing. So I think that's where Fashion Declares obviously has a lot of power and where the narrative can really be strong. Um, but yeah, in terms of what we do, we do a lot around um, descriptions on clothes and we do kind of lots of trend reports as well. We do a luxury trends report, we do ESG reporting, things like that, which um, trying to help educate the consumer, but there's a long way to go. Yeah, there's, there's a long way to go, but using every opportunity you possibly can to, um, to, to move the awareness of, of um, your, your network is, is really key. Th thanks for sharing that, Seth. I, I, um, Seth, Seth, can I just say one quick thing as well, yeah. just to comment on Ben's point as well, and that I've just seen your message. I totally agree. I think like one thing that I've said to Seth about fashion declares is we should lean into the fashion piece. Like I'm in fashion because it's exciting, it's creative, like, it's bold, it's authentic to who I am. And that's why I love it. And that's why I get a buzz off it. So like yeah, making, I, can I, yeah. Can I add to that? Please. If you look at the images that you brought up, Safia, 
around repair and replace and the swallows and the kids and the dress and the running and everything. So it's just completely counterproductive. They'll work with the people who already buy what you're saying. They're not going to work with anybody else who are going to look at it and go, do you know what? That does not marry up my, with my Saturday night out in Newcastle. Just, it's completely counterproductive. So shoot the beauty. What you Instead of trying to change huge behaviours, shoot stuff in a way that aligns with behaviours. It's a much easier sell. It's a much easier pitch. And, and beauty engages better than ugliness, than sackcloth and ashes. So all the stuff I'm seeing at the moment coming out of XR, out of climate activists, it just is so ugly. And it just is counterproductive. Just stop doing it. So it'd be great, Ben, when we meet on the 20th of July, if you could perhaps bring some of your images along um, and, and share them with us, because it would be great to see, um, you know, what the sustainable proposition is, you know, whether it's, you know, secondhand, beautifully styled, repaired, whatever it well, might just be. Just an example, when I'm shooting XR, I shoot it as if I'm shooting a fashion shoot. Yeah, okay. It would be lovely to see those images. This is, a, this is everything I was saying in... in in my when I was speaking earlier, I, and, and I, I think it's 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 not as I said when I was when I was um, um, looking for you know a, a, a desirable um, uh, way of living lifestyle imagery. It, it, they, they they're not really there. They're not in abundance. They're not you know you can't go and pick them off and say look this is what we should be doing because we're at that crossroads where we have to be deciding what the images look like and yes Ben I agree they should be beautiful because that and, and that aspirational side of things is what brings people along and the Cecily is that, I hope I pronounced your name correctly was saying that too this is this is what people aspire to is the beauty of things and also um, uh, Alicia said it also you know, it, it's, it's be the beauty of things are, are, is important. So I love that. Those collages were just... Stunning. They are the gorgeous. Yeah. 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 Uh, anyway, I'll shut up. <laughs> no, thanks ever so much for um, for making it obviously really, really clear. So th this is this is the purpose of, of this group. You know, it would be fantastic to be able to pull together um, imagery that is beginning to do this and do it really, really well. Um, when Devora and um, and and Bella and I got together, we were finding that there really wasn't very much that spoke incredibly well. So we, what we've done is we've shown some of the the better examples of that. We would love people on the call um, to bring um, ideas together. If they're obviously if they're images from a different photographer or creator, um, then we wouldn't record the call um, because obviously we wouldn't have the copyright to show it. Um, but it would be really really helpful um, to see. What or can I, can, sorry, uh, Savi, can I also say, you know, can we brainstorm amongst us all um, to, to, to come up with ideas that we can go off and create the imagery so that it's, so that it, it, it is, is in existence? Um, I think that would be helpful too. Okay. Um, how, how would you like to start that process? We could start it. We have six minutes left. Let's start. <laughs> I used to be um, textile designer, freelance um, textile designer for high fashion and furnishing, and I worked out I couldn't do that. <laughs> um, but I th as a creative person, you know, I have a fine art background. I've always felt that actually constraints drive creativity. When things are like, you can have whatever you want, you can do what you ever want, whatever you want. Most people, that doesn't drive creativity. When you really are forced to, um, to, to have the limits, then that is what drives creativity. And, and part of living on one time, I was very aware of that. And, you know, I, I've actually come up with a, with a little little drawing, again my drawing, it's not great at the moment, but you know, natural carbon balance, understanding what 0.7 tons per year means, because that's where we're heading. Now, how does that drive creativity? And I think it's pretty, I think it's a pretty good bomb up your bum, <laughs> to put it another way, because we've got to get there, 
Um, my understanding is we've got to get there within really this, this decade. I mean, it, you know, this is immediate. This isn't like a long-term thing. We've got to get there very, very quickly. And if that does not focus everybody's minds into, into, in, into becoming more creative, I don't know what will, basically. No, you know. tr truly. Um, so, you know, we would love to have imagery um, that shows uh, a, a new way of, of, of fashion communications um, in the climate, ecological and social emergency. Um, we would love to be able to, uh, to profile that work. Um, we, we think that there'd be lots of people that would be indeed very interested to see, um, you know, how those images looked um, and the diversity of those images. Um, I, I, I think it is about, what I, I suppose the, the question I would have to Ben would be, you know, what would you need to, to do it? Uh, top of my hat, I haven't expected you to put me on the spot, but I guess what I do is, I just think you know, there were three, so I can't, I can't talk about the bigger bit around the change of terminal. I'm just going to focus on the imagery. You had, there was, there were three images on one of the slides. I think there was yellow shoes, which were being resold or something. There was some jeans that had a torn pocket that was something about being mended or whatever it might be. And there was one other shot. So what I'd probably want to do is reshoot them so they stop looking so functional. And they so I'd want to make so I, I can't remember if you could see the repair on the on the on the I can't even remember if it was the soles that being repaired. But I'd want to make the, the repair look incredibly sexy. And what I'd want, I'd, in other words, to completely go against what's actually there at the moment. So if you if you go back and look at that, so I guess I'd reshoot and say, okay, if you were doing this, so instead of sackcloth and ashes sort of style, which is kind of what they're doing at the moment, what happens if you were if you were shooting this as conventionally, as if you were shooting for a particular, and I think I want to be clear on the audience it was being shot for. So yeah. I guess yeah. I'd need some briefing on, okay, let's assume that the target market is this and their current dominant priorities are X, Y, and Z. So I'd want to shoot in a style that lined up with those. Whereas at the moment, I don't think that's what's happening. So I don't think it would be a huge deal. I don't think it'd be a massively complex thing. Um, can I say that, you know, I, for me, um, I think it'd be really cool to bring um, the, uh, the, the, the work of um, um, the, the chap from Triad. His, I'd love to bring his windows to life. Um, I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's lovely to see them in the windows, but if, I, if people were wearing them and showing, you know, the younger generation that, um, that actually they can look um, absolutely amazing, uh, with this sort of styling that you know all the all of all of fashion imagery going forward would be possibly second hand and styled amazingly so that people can take inspiration and aspiration from that okay so it would be interesting to have somebody from trade perhaps and um who's working on the styling to join our next meeting um, I know that we're coming up for um, for time very, very soon. Um, interesting comment in from Rachel. I did some research uh, for some fast fashion customers. They shared that for them, sustainability won't be a main driver. Um, we would have to showcase it in an easily accessible way um, and aspirational. Okay. Yeah. So again, it's, um, you know, how do we communicate to people who are still, um, you know, unaware that, that things are changing obviously legislation esgs etc cetera, etc cetera, will hopefully begin to change things but we can't we can't wait um okay so uh, i just wonder um millie do we have um the slide up with uh the old and new terms so here here's some of the um the gathering of some of those comments of you know how how we start to reshape if you like um, obviously these are words, these are not the visual narrative, um, but thank you very much for um, popping that together so speedily. 
we're going to meet again on the 20th of July um, at 5 uh, p.m. Uh, British time. So please do, do join. Um, I think we can take that down. Please pop it into your diaries. Um, we, will, we will send you all um, a note. Um, so if you, if you can join, um, please do. And um, I'd, I'd just love to just have one um, comment from each of our great speakers today, if that's okay. Um, could we start, please? Um, Alicia, would you like to say just a couple of um, words to wrap up with, and then we'll just go around the room really quickly. Yes, sorry, I was trying to unmute. I'm, um... I feel like the same like Cecily, like I work uh, in a big corporation and uh, sometimes it's frustrating as I mentioned, but if we make small steps, even in our group, like if we make a small action that can lead with something else because everyone have different life and different situations. So we, I, I'm not trying to find the perfect way of living. I'm trying to change as much as I can around myself. So yeah. Thanks so much. Um, can we have a, a, a just a quick word from you, Devora? Yes, um, I I think that we uh, back to what I said earlier. I think we must dedicate our our, our communications to showing uh, how uh, a sustainable lifestyle uh, uh, looks and to make it desirable. Thank you, um, and um, Bell. Uh, yeah, so, you know, the people who are working inside the big bad structures have, uh, in some respects, an even more difficult task than we uh, activists have, because you are trying to change things from the inside, your work is invaluable. Um, and, and obviously, you know, the emergency means it's all hands on deck. Um, I love the idea also that all our activities now have to be in service to the planet in some way. Uh, don't don't not have fun, but you know we need to all be working towards this uh, common emergency. Thank you, Bell. Um, Rosalind. Yeah, um, one of the one of the phrases I came out of my my um, project with was cultural metamorphosis, and I, I do think that we need to be much deeper, and more expansive in the way that, that we're looking at this. I think at the moment, yeah, I think it's pretty much stuck on it. I'm not hearing people even talking about different different ways people, um, you know, kind of change their lives. I, I, I don't think what I'm hearing yet is it's deeper and transformative in the way that we need to be. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I just want to thank everyone for participating. Some really, really interesting comments, um, you know, making, um, for example, more socially acceptable to wear the same clothes again and again, as opposed to a handful of time times, you know, right, right through to um, the, the work that we've all done to brainstorm um, some of uh, the, the, um, the, the feelings behind the new um, marketing narratives, but also the imagery behind it. So um, I, I'd really like to thank our speakers um, and, and all of you for joining. Um, uh, my name is Safia Mini. Um, if you haven't signed up to Fashion Declares, um, please do. There are some fantastic tools um, and also some webinars that uh, um, in, in uh, bringing together brands and experts. Um, so on June the 8th, we'll have uh, low impact materials, biodiversity and regenerative farming. Um, and there'll be other webinars that we'll be running um, uh, after that monthly. So please do join us and um, thank you so much for, uh, for, for staying um, the full duration of a, a very exciting jam-packed one hour. Thank you so much. <laughs>